One of the most controversial riding techniques of modern motorcycle racing was popularized by Valentino Rossi in 2005, when he dived up the inside of Sete Gibbenau with his leg dangling from the bike. He managed to pass Gibbenau and then ultimately he won the world title that season. Nowadays what's been dubbed the doctor's dangle is included in many racers repertoires from MotoGP to local club racers. While a lot of racers have adopted a technique, there's to this day no definitive answer explaining why they dangle their leg when going into corners. So in today's episode of Speed and Noise, we're going to explore the reasons why racers dangle their legs when going into corners. As the technique has become popular, a number of theories about why racers do this have emerged. These theories include 1. That the foot comes off the peg when moving the foot back from shifting to turning, and that leaving it dangling conserves energy and is more natural. 2. That it gives more leverage to hold the body up against braking forces. 3. That it creates aerodynamic drag and that it's creating more brake force. 4. That it transfers the center of gravity to the inside, enabling the rider to keep the bike more upright when the rear wheel wants to come out or slide. 5. That it blocks other riders from overtaking. 6. That it is psychological and a ritual giving confidence to the rider. 7. That it does not provide any benefit at all and that the master of brain games, Rossi, did it to psych the competition into copying him. To make it easier for us to evaluate these theories, let's first break down a fairly established way of entering a corner on a racetrack into several key elements. First we're going to exclude the leg dangle technique, and then we're going to try to understand where it fits in into these set of elements. Before applying the brakes moving into corners, riders set their body up for the corner. When the rider has set their body up, they use a reference point to gauge when to start braking before the corner. Some riders apply the rear brake before the front brake to set the bike down. After applying the brakes at the brake point, the rider simultaneously downshifts to the correct gear for the corner. Now the rider is looking for another reference point called a turn-in point. Upon reaching this point, a counter steering maneuver is used to lean the bike over. Most proficient racers use a technique called trail braking, still applying the brakes after they have entered the corner and slowly releasing them as the lean angle increases. So if we try to position the leg dangle in this roadmap of events, it's clear that in left hand turns, it has to happen after they shifted down to the correct gear, because otherwise they wouldn't be able to shift. In right hand turns, it probably happens after they've applied some amount of rear brake to set the bike down. So when do they put the foot back on the peg? Before or after going into the corner? Let's observe some racers applying the technique. It looks like most racers put their foot back on the peg right before or during the counter steering maneuver towards the apex. Some riders do angle the bike or back it in right before putting their foot back and shooting for the apex. Let us now evaluate theory number one that the foot naturally comes off the peg when going from a shifting position to a turning position. This theory says that in order to get the foot back from shifting a GP bike where you downshift by moving the gear shift lever upwards you have to lift your foot from the peg, and that moving your foot under heavy braking naturally makes it fly forward. And so a rider who's either trying to conserve energy or accidentally let it fly will dangle their leg. Interestingly, if we go back to the 1990s racing scene, Kevin Schwantz and Wayne Rainey were seen doing a similar maneuver when braking and entering corners as described in this theory. Let us now look at Rossi again in 2005 when he was first seen using this technique. It is a left hand turn. We can see that Rossi clearly downshifts and is about to move his foot back to the peg, but instead lets it dangle before putting it back. So clearly this theory has some merit, but is it the full answer? No, it can't be because we can observe racers using this technique in right hand turns as well as left hand turns. So I rate this theory as confirmed, but it's not the full answer. So what about theory number two? Will dangling your leg provide you with more leverage to hold your body up against braking forces? To understand this theory, let's go grab a bathroom scale and find a solid wall. Push the bathroom scale against the wall with both your hands, having both feet aligned. Push the scale as hard as you can and observe how hard you can push. Now, 
Then go either foot in front of you, push as hard as you can and observe how hard you can push now. Now I can consistently hit higher numbers with either of my feet dangling. So what's happening here really? Look at any sport where you would see a similar maneuver, be it MMA or football. Having one foot in front of the other is a traditional technique to produce more punching or pushing power. So when racers dangle their foot in front of the bike, it is plausible that this would give them more leverage to hold their body up against braking forces. The reason I'm saying it's plausible is because some racers dangle their foot more to the side rather than in front of the bike. Thus, I rate theory number two as confirmed, dependent on the rider and their specific use of the technique. So what about theory number three, that it creates more aerodynamic drag and thus creates more braking force? Well, to evaluate this theory, it's very important how we frame the question. The reason it's so important how we frame this question is because sticking up the upper body and pushing the knee out will create additional drag force, as compared to keeping a tucked position when braking. We found data from wind tunnel testing with a number of motorcycles and riders, showing that the combined drag coefficient and reference area between a tucked versus an upright seated position can differ as much as 44% on a sports motorcycle with fairings. The combined drag coefficient and reference area is often referred to as the CDA value. So when a rider moves from a tucked down position to a more upright seated position, they will increase the braking force by presenting a bigger reference area and by creating turbulence increasing the CD value. So, if the racer gets a bigger reference area by sticking their foot out, they will create more aerodynamic drag than not sticking it out, especially at higher speeds. So the question then becomes, how much shorter would the braking distance be between dangling the leg and not dangling the leg? Well, there's no definitive way of answering this because data from MotoGP is really hard to get by. I rate this theory as plausible in the sense that it could create slightly more braking force, but that the difference is probably not even measurable. All right, so let's tackle theory number four, which is that they're dangling their leg to transfer the center of gravity of them and the bike to the inside in order to keep the bike more upright while they're sliding the rear wheel. This theory is certainly interesting since we know that. Moving the body to the inside of a corner will translate the combined center of gravity of the rider and the motorcycle, enabling a higher cornering speed with less lean angle. This is one of the reasons why racers hang off in corners, and it's one of the reasons why motocross racers have their legs out in corners. So, the fact that transferring weight to the inside of the bike will enable riders to have less lean angle is indeed true. But wait, why would you need any lean angle when braking for a corner? Well, here's a picture of Marc Marquez and a picture of Jorge Lorenzo braking for the same corner in the France MotoGP race of 2016. As we can see, both racers have a rear end that is offset from the front end, with Marc having what seems to be the most angle. In order to not flip the bike over with the rear end being offset like this, a racer has to lean the bike. The amount of lean angle needed will be affected by where the combined central gravity of the racer and the bike is. Thus, Moving the body to the inside of the corner will require less lean angle for this maneuver. As we can see in the pictures, Mark and Jorge have different braking techniques. Jorge Lorenzo is known for having a very smooth riding style, braking earlier than his opponents but carrying a higher cornering speed. Whereas Mark Marquez is known for a very aggressive riding style, braking late into corners. Okay, so it's clear that Mark is sliding his rear wheel more than Jorge is. But why is he hanging out his leg when he's sliding the rear wheel? To understand this better, let's have a look at a motocross racer mid-corner. We can see that he's pushing the bike beneath him with his leg pointed forward. So why would a motocross racer not hang off the bike like a MotoGP racer? The simple explanation to this is that it's really hard to control a slide while hanging off the bike. Physically, this could be explained by the fact that by hanging off the bike, a rolling torque is introduced which pushes the rear wheel out when it loses grip. When hanging off and sliding at the same time, it's really hard to move your body back to a more upright position, which would remove some of the rolling torque pushing the rear wheel out. So by pushing the bike beneath them, they can control how much rolling torque is introduced by the upper body, and thus control the slide better than when hanging off. So, a motocross body position when cornering is a compromise between moving weight to the inside of the corner to lessen the amount of lean angle needed, and having the ability to move the upper body around to control the slide. Let's go back to that picture of Mark Marquez braking. 
we can see that his upper body is above the bike, not at all in the same position as when he is mid-corner. We can also see that his lower body is positioned into the corner. By dangling his leg, he is moving more weight to the inside of the corner, lessening the amount of lean angle needed. But he is keeping his upper body aligned with the bike, likely in order to control the sliding rear wheel by modulating the amount of rolling torque introduced by his upper body. I rate theory number 4 as confirmed. By dangling the leg, more weight is shifted into the corner while being able to keep the upper body in line with the bike to control the slide. So now we get to theory number 5. Does the maneuver block other riders from passing? That dangling the leg would block other riders from passing is easy to disprove, since there are lots of examples of this. But does it have an impact on how easy it is to pass? Well, it likely has some amount of effect. But the way that the theory is phrased, as in, it completely blocks other riders from passing, I rate as busted. So what about theory number 6, that it is psychological, giving confidence to the rider? Considering that the racers using the technique have said things such as, it feels like I can brake harder, or it's sort of a leverage to sort of help tip it in. And the fact that it likely gives more leverage and control with the rear wheel sliding, it certainly seems like the technique would give more confidence. So I rate the theory as confirmed, with the note that it's not only psychological. So, was the maneuver introduced by Rossi in order to play a brain game with other racers into copying him? Well, it certainly doesn't seem to be the case considering all the things that I presented in this video. And therefore, I rate this theory as busted. To conclude, dangling the leg when braking into a corner can help conserve energy when moving the foot from a shifting to a cornering position, it can provide more leverage holding the body up, it gives a bit more aerodynamic drag as compared to not dangling the foot. It transfers the weight to the inside of the corner while enabling the racer to keep their upper body aligned with the bike. It does not block other riders from passing and it can inspire confidence in the rider. So that concludes today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I also hope I didn't break the internet now that I provided you with all these answers. If you really like this content and you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel. If you want to support the channel, the best way you can do that is by sharing this video on social media, pressing like and also commenting. So that's it for today, thank you for watching and as always, see you next time!